Hey, so for my first video of 2020, I thought I'd do something real simple, one take. I wanted to do another one of my yes and old school style YouTube response videos. This one is to a YouTuber named Rose Evans, who is a YouTuber obviously and a musician and a really stunning visual artist who posts a lot of videos of herself drawing things. And Rose, a while back, made an art tour of her room where she showed everything that was on her walls, and it was mostly stuff that she had made. Unfortunately, I am not a visual artist. I am not someone who excels at drawing or painting. So a lot of the art is not mine. But I wanted to give you an art tour of my room, uh, and we can just see what I have hung up on my walls. So, first of all, I don't think you've seen this room. It's in my new house, which I moved into back in September, so it'll be a learning experience for all of us. Let me turn the camera around so I can see what I'm showing you. So, of course, to start here by the door, we've got my giant pride flag. Um, and, you know, when I first got this room and I had all this wall space, I thought, I have this giant pride flag that my friend Adrian got for me. Should I hang it up on my wall? It's, it's, it is pretty big. It's going to cover up an entire wall. But then I decided, you know what? I'm going to hang up a giant pride flag on my wall. I don't need anybody's permission to do that. I'm going to do it. So here above my desk, we have what's called a litograph. And litographs are designs made from a bunch of words all smashed together. So if you look really closely, you can see the words. This is the text of a big chunk of the Aeneid by Virgil, but I don't recommend you reading the actual litograph. I recommend you finding a different translation. First of all, the text is really tiny. Second of all, this is a really dumb translation that's in like rhyming couplets. Don't bother with it. That's not how it was intended to be read. I'm going to go full classic snob on you. Over here, now I did say that there was no art by me on this tour, but there is art by people in my family and people I care about. So here are some things by my brother. First of all, this poster is a version of a drawing he did when he was quite young, but a lot of people in my family have a copy of this because it's so good. It's a bunch of different kinds of parrots, <laughs> which my brother was very interested in for a long time, and I think still has a soft spot for. All lined up on this big tree, this funny shaped tree. And sometimes when people visit me, I ask them which bird they are, like which one suits their personality the closest. I think if you ask me that question, I would probably be either the Toko Toucan or the budgie, but you can weigh in. I'll show you the whole, the whole, the whole picture, <laughs> and you can decide which which of these birds are you. Well, next up we have another one of uh, my brother's retro drawings. This is a poster that I framed of the Night Watchmen, which were his characters that he designed in a superhero comic, and I think he still uses some of these characters in his comics, but he actually doesn't do the art anymore. He does just the writing, and he's teamed up with a different artist to make comic books, and he just came up out with one that I will link to in the description. So down here on my dresser, there is one thing I wanted to show you, which is this really lovely lacy watercolor design made by a friend of mine named Tien uh, who is now living in New York. She was originally, she was born in China and these are all of the animals in the Chinese zodiac. Uh, so you can see the dragon, the snake, the monkey, I was born in the year of the dog and the dog is this beautiful purple guy right here. It's a very fragile little piece of art, but I love it. It's so colorful, and I am just very into it. Here's a music stand, which 
belonged to my grandmother, who is no longer with us, but she just collected a lot of stuff, and when she died, or I think when she moved into assisted living, everyone had to clean out her basement, and there was just a bunch of stuff that didn't have a home, and so it was just sort of free to a good home, and I took this music, music box because I thought it was nice. Some foreign money, a picture from an alternative spring break that I did at the UChicago Community Service Center. Here are my some of my buttons, and here's a scarf that I've been working on knitting for the last like 10 years. <laughs> This scarf is finished, and I wear it almost every day in the winter. My mom made it for me. It's a Fibonacci scarf, so you can see as the blue decreases, the purple increases, and vice versa in a Fibonacci pattern. Okay, well, this is an art, but I guess it's architecture. I have a really nice large room with bay windows, which I find very, very nice, very lovely. Let's see. Over here, above my bookshelf, we've got a really cool poster that I got when I was in like fourth grade and we went on a class trip across the state of Ohio from Cincinnati up north to Cleveland. And this, the light is, there's a little bit of a glare, but if you look here it says map of the Western Reserve including the Firelands of Ohio. And the Western Reserve, it's, it's just sort of this northern part of Ohio here, but it has kind of a fascinating story behind it. Basically, when the original 13 British colonies were founded, um, nobody knew how big, you know, North America was. So basically in all these colonial charters for like Massachusetts and New Hampshire and all these places, they say like, oh, let's see, the western boundary for our colony is the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, obviously, uh, pretty much none of these colonies got all the way to the Pacific Ocean, you know, in their original founding, but apparently one of the original colonies, Connecticut, actually decided to explore some of the western parts of the territory that they originally claimed. And I guess they got as far as Northern Ohio, what is now Northern Ohio, and they called it the Western Reserve of Connecticut. So there's actually a Case Western Reserve University in, your, in Cleveland. And, you know, it's Ohio, but I, you know, have this recurring fantasy that Connecticut will try to reclaim their Western Reserve and there will be like a mini civil war between Connecticut and Ohio. I don't know if that will ever happen, but that's the weird story about how part of Ohio is also somehow a part of Connecticut. They do not border each other. <laughs> For those of you who are not American, uh, Ohio is quite a bit west of Connecticut. So here we've got my cork board, which is very exciting. I've had it for a while, but I never, I just never got around to putting it up in my old apartment. I've got more buttons on here, some solar eclipse glasses over on the side, um, a lot of stickers uh, from all the different radio stations that I have worked at over the years. Oh, here's a picture of my high school orchestra performing at Carnegie Hall. Now, we didn't have really an audience besides our parents, but we did get to perform in Carnegie Hall, which was very neat. This is my grandmother. This is West Virginia, which is my ancestral homeland. My ancestors came from Greece, Italy, and West Virginia. Oh, and here's some more family-produced artwork. Um, this is my mom's Christmas present to me. Um, <laughs> I, or sorry, Santa's Christmas present to me. I get to, to go to England to visit some of my friends who are living there. Um, but she made this collage on Microsoft Word, and she was very, very proud of it, so I'm showing it off. <laughs> and here is the Daston family calendar, which uh, has a bunch of, you know, my cousins and stuff, and also my ancestors, like my grandfather, who I never met. Here's me at the University of Chicago a couple years ago. Here's my brother uh, building a snowman. <laughs> That's an old picture. 
Anyway, that's the family calendar. What else should I show you? Oh yeah, this table is my nightstand, and it's got elephants. <laughs> my parents got this for me when I went off to college. Apparently it was originally a bar stool, but I like it as my night table. Here's a Turtles All The Way Down tour poster. Here, oh this is interesting, um, on my closet door here. This is a share of stock for the local cooperative bookstore, which is a really wonderful academic bookstore. I used to buy all my school books there. And it's now a nonprofit, but when I got to college originally, it was a for-profit company where you could just you could buy stock in the company to become a member. And my parents got me this uh, this share of stock here uh, on the very first day that I arrived at college. So that is my art tour. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Now you're getting to lie down in bed with me, which is very intimate, because I want to show you one more thing about my room. This window, which just you can see right from when you're lying in bed. <laughs> and it's really nice, because you can see the moon when it's out. You can see the sunset, if it's a particularly beautiful sunset. It's just nice to have this view, to see out all these windows. I like having a lot of natural light and having a room that feels like me, <laughs> like, a, like an expression of me and all of my different artistic tastes and pictures of people I love. That's it for my art tour. I hope you enjoyed it and I wanted to make this as a response to Rose, and I also wanted to just say I know that things in Australia have been really scary lately from what I've heard on the news. There's a lot of fires, and I wanted to just say to my Australian viewers out there that I hope you're doing okay, and I'm thinking of you. So, I have a lot of great videos planned for this year, have a happy 2020, everybody, and I'll talk to you again soon.